Hi friends, it is no secret that the leaders of the USSR loved gigantic projects, and this was expressed in everything, and radio components were no exception. This is the largest general-purpose transistor made in the USSR, P210. It weighs about 30 grams. The transistor is germanium with collector current 12 amps and the maximum power dissipated of 60 watts, which is very good for its time. And this is another transistor TK235-32. Based on them, I did a powerful electronic load of 1.5 kilowatts. They have unusual design for transistors. Collector current as much as 32 amps. But in such a housing, there are also more powerful transistors, for example, TK235-63. It's for 63 amps. This transistor can operate at frequencies up to 4 MHz and have a gain of 8 to 100. The collector emitter voltage could reach 360 volts, depending on the index. Yes, the design is really interesting, but there were even more interesting transistors, for example this 100 Amperes Monster TK152-100. This kind pin design is usual for a thricer, but this is a transistor. This is a piece of copper with a weight of 55 grams. Power dissipated by the collector is up to 350 watts. Can you find modern transistors which are capable to dissipate 350 watts of long term in linear mode? But don't rush into Google in search of a similar modern transistor. Soviet power transistors are unrivaled, and the next transistor will dispel all your doubts. Let me introduce you TKD165-80. I'm not joking, this is a real transistor. My sample has a current limit of 125 amps. But in same housing was also TKD165-250 with pulse maximum collector current of 400 amps. Last one and TKD265-250 are the most powerful transistors produced in the USSR and probably all over the world. Of course, you can recall the power IGBT or FAT modules, but this is different. It isn't entirely appropriate to compare single transistor with power modules. The transistor weighs 275 grams. The pins are impressive. The emitter has a diameter of 80 mm. Without a doubt, a current of 125 amps can flow through it, and this will not be the limit. Once this transistor almost broke my leg, just falling from the table to my foot. It was very painful. It's funny, of course, but such transistors you can use for defending, if necessary. By the way, transistors came in a factory foam box, and that Soviet material was harsh and indestructible, not like modern ones. These old samples were made back in the 1985. The manufacturer was Scientific Production Association Transistor Yerevan City Armenian SSR. I forgot the most important point. TKD means Silicon Darlington Transistor. Yes, it is composite transistor, and despite its titanic dimensions, in theory, it is easy to control. But I will tell you a secret that theory and practice don't coincide. The collector emitter voltage is from 80 to 1000 volts, depending on the index. And I know what parameter you want to hear from me. What power can dissipate transistor at this housing? Unfortunately, I couldn't find the exact information. If my opinion is interesting, then I think that in a pulse mode, a few kilowatts can easily withstand. About linear mode, I can't say anything. Let me remind you that this is the hardest mode of operation for the transistor, but let's find some info experimentally and load it in linear mode. Now, a short advertisement. Tired of home PCB technology? Or your PCB isn't as beautiful as you'd like? Company GLC will produce for you boards of any complexity and size. The minimum cost of a batch of 10 by 10 cm starts at $2, and the price doesn't change depending on the chosen color. Fast delivery, convenient payment methods, and the highest level quality are guaranteed. GLC PCB production is back to its normal work. 
feel free to order PCB, SMT, and Stancil. You will find a link to the GLC website in the description below the video. To load this transistor, we need a very powerful power source, and I have one. This is a 1400 watt laboratory power supply. The indicators on the power supply will show current and voltage. The circuit is a simple current stabilizer on an operational amplifier. It was assembled for the past experiment when I loaded this transistor. The new monster mounted on a not very large radiator. The measurement will be short term, so I will not use the cooling fan. Of course, there is a chance that a breakdown will occur and the transistor will go to waste. If this happens, there will be an occasion to open it and look at the crystal, but it will be a pity. This is still a museum exhibit. Low power power is supplied from a low power laboratory unit. It is necessary to power the control circuit, but this isn't so important. All our attention is to a powerful laboratory unit. The transistor dissipated 1 kilowatt for a short time, while the aluminum radiator heated up to about 100 degrees Celsius in a few seconds. Next, the transistor worked a little longer at a power of 800 watts and withstood well that mode. The housing perfectly removes heat. The limitation is only due to the size of the radiator. I won't guess about the limit of transistor, but we know one thing for sure. A kilowatt in linear mode isn't the limit for it. And this is the most powerful transistor that I ever held in my hands. Yes, I could still load it, but it was scary and pity to damage it. Such transistors haven't been produced for a long time, and every day there are fewer and fewer of them. When you look at this transistor, it feels like a blacksmith made it. It is unusual, perhaps even unreliable for industrial applications. But one thing is for sure, we were ahead of the world at that time. Nowadays, the use of transistors of such power doesn't make practical sense. Now the technology has gone ahead and a few fat in the TO247 housing in a pulse mode can compete with this monster, but only in a pulse mode, not linear. In any case, I'm glad that this transistor was in my hands and I was able to show you it in all its glory. Please don't forget to rate this video if you liked it. Well, now I say goodbye. Until next time, with you was Kaisian TV.